Hi, I'm Harvey Briggs. I'm the editor and publisher of Rides and Drives, and today we're going behind the wheel with Mike Payton. He is the chief motorer and vice president of Mini of the Americas. Hi, Mike. How you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you as well. Mike came to Mini from BMW Motorcycles, where he led the operations there. Before that, he spent almost 10 years at Harley-Davidson after a stint at Ford. So Mike, two things. First, I want to thank you for making sure that Mini two-door and four-door hardtops and the convertibles are going to have manual transmissions. We yes. love our manuals here, so thank you. <laughs> and, and second, how is being chief motorer different from, say, just, you know, head of the division or whatever? What does that mean to you? You know, I think uh, it, it says that there you really have to, to connect and acknowledge that Mini is such a huge community. And so it's not just leading the brand and all the, you know, the operational aspects and all those things. It's, it's a lot about connecting with the people and you've got to exude the brand and the passion around the brand. So that's, that's where Chief Motor comes from. It's kind of, I think it's that responsibility that it's to more than just, uh, it's more than just the car, if you will. Got it, that's great. So I want to go, we, you know, these interviews are about learning about you, not just what's going on at Mini, although we'll do some of that. Yeah. Um, so tell me about your passion for cars and where that came from. Yeah, you know, so I, I was actually born in California, but I moved to Detroit when I was three. And uh, when you grew up in Detroit, there is no other industry in the world other than the car industry. So uh, that, was, that was kind of in my blood from the beginning. Uh, my dad used to work for a company called Federer Mogul. And Federer Mogul, in, in almost every car around the world, whether it's wheel bearings, engine, be uh, engine, um, engine seals, things like that, it's, uh, you know, there's, that, that got me kind of that exposure to the business. And uh, I'm the youngest of six. And one of my brothers, he started out as a, uh, a zone manager with American Motors. Uh -huh. and uh, selling gremlins and things like that. So, so I got kind of that, that taste from a few different sides of uh, the family. And of course, like I said, living in Detroit, um, it's just, it's, it's car business constantly. So that kind of got me my initial kind of uh, feeling or desire to, to check into the car business. Cool. So what kind of car did you learn to drive in then? Yeah, so... Oh man, I would say when I first took, took driver's ed, they were so nondescript. I, I, I don't know if I could be actually remember that, but the first time I actually got behind the wheel, it's actually a manual, and it was in a uh, Renault Fuego. And uh, probably not at the top of the list of many people's uh, perfect sports cars, but uh, for me, it was, I was definitely kind of in that, if you can't find it, grind it mode. But uh, it was a lot of fun once I got a hang of it. And that was really my first, you know, experience getting and driving a car. Cool. So the Renault Fuego. So that's from the AMC side of things, obviously. Yes. Any uh, fun stories from that time when you were a teenager driving around in particular memories about motoring, say, that really took you in this path? You know, a lot of, a lot of it was with my, uh, you know, obviously growing up in kind of an automotive household. It was, there was always something different that was brought home. You know, my dad had new cars all the time. Uh, so it always kind of got me exposure to whatever was new, whatever was different. And so uh, that, that was probably one of the, the best things about kind of growing up in a household that had a lot of automotive gearheads in it. Um, I was never really kind of the, the under the hood kind of guy or things like that. I was usually more of the, I really appreciated the, the design, I appreciated the technology, and uh, but it was always a, it was always something new because my dad cycled through just a ton of cars. Yeah, cool, cool. So when did you realize you could translate that passion for cars into a career? Yeah, you know, so um, just just kind of seeing how some of the family had progressed uh, into the business, I I had always really liked the. The design aspect of things. I've always been kind of a, a real technology guy, even even before technology was really a big thing. Just even what was in, you know, some of the cars years and years ago, um, that really got me excited. That got me excited about the car business, and so I said, you know what, those two things come together kind of at the intersection of the car business. And, uh, and then the next step was, well, okay, well, what what brands can I tie myself with and connect with that 
that will kind of take me down that path from a, from a career standpoint. But I've always kind of always considered myself, a, you know, primarily a car, a car guy, if you will. So, yeah. So tell me about how you got into motorcycling then. What, what took you to Milwaukee? Yeah, so that, that was kind of this time uh, when the industry was starting to tank. <laughs> and uh, I had been with Ford about 17 years and thought I was going to retire at Ford because, I mean, I loved it there. And uh, I, I developed a nickname. I was the mayor because uh, everybody knew me. I was handling product launches at the time. Uh, I got to know everybody from, you know, the design guys all the way to the, you know, the plant managers and everything in between. And I just, I loved it. But it got to the point where, you know, the industry got really, really challenged there. This is kind of this 2007 time frame. And, uh, you know, I was, it was, it was getting tiring and it was time for a change. And so I started just kind of keeping my eyes open out there. And I just started riding. And coincidentally, uh, I just started riding BMWs. So it was kind of a little, a little bit of a fore foreshadowing, I guess. Um, but I, so I started saying, well, what brands are out there that, that would be, you know, relevant and, and Harley was actually looking for sales managers at the time. And, uh, I said, you know what, let me, let me see if this will all work out. And, um, it did. And so next thing I know, I was handling, uh, about half of the country for, for Harley. I was living down in Dallas at the time. Okay. And, uh, after moving all over the country, you know, with Ford. Now it was down there when, at Dallas with, with Harley. And uh, that, that gave me kind of a, you know, the, the next chapter, if you will. I just started, started riding before that. I really didn't know much about the power sports industry, uh, but then really got to, really got to love that, that side of the business, if you will. It's an interesting side of the business. I mean, we do a lot of motorcycle stuff as well as car on the website. Um, but Mini is the closest automotive brand I can think of to a motorcycle brand, that sort of connection and passion people have. Yeah. So what did you learn at Harley that, and, and BMW Motorrad that you could bring to Mini? Yeah, I, so in, to, to your point, I think if I were to, to ever make that transition or think about making that transition, I, I couldn't have imagined you know, a better way to do it. So certainly Harley, you know, you think Harley and it's uh, the community and it's, it's the, the, the passion around the product. When I came over to Motorrad, uh, Motorrad was very much also around, you know, the product, and a lot of passionate owners and, and such. And, but the, the industries themselves, while maybe, you know, power sports dealers won't want to admit it, the, the back end, the operational aspects are very similar between the car business and the motorcycle business. What's different though and we start talking about motorcycles and the whole power sports industry, it is definitely a want item, not a need item. Right. And, uh, but then you start to see that, that connection with people and their products and they're passionate about it. It's not like you get a bunch of, uh, I don't know, people with their Toyota Camrys, you know, sitting around saying, Oh, I love my Camry. This is fantastic. Uh, not that it's not a great product, but it's, it's, it, they're not really passionate about it. That I think is is the real difference, and so a lot of what I learned both at, at Harley and at Motorrad, it helped me bring that passion over to Mini because Mini has some passionate passionate owners, and that's actually just it's a critical part. The community of the brand, community part of the brand, is really important. Yeah, so that mu that must have been tough with that decision you had to make with Mini takes the states mm -hmm. this year. Then obviously the right thing to do, but that's part of building that community. What are the other things that you look to do this year, maybe that could encourage that community now that that can yeah, so, so I mean, it, Nini Takes the States was a perfect example that I was really hoping that by July, you know, with all the crazy stuff going on this year, I was hoping for July was going to be that period of normalcy that everyone was really looking for. They were, they were hoping to kind of, you know, kind of get back into their lives and re-engage and re-engage with the community. And, you know, the reality is when you start looking at kind of how things have been, you know, progressing in the country, um, economic and financial situations that's putting people in, not just the, the health aspect. And then we started talking about, well, what about all the towns we're going to be, you know, going through? And are they going to be, are they going to be receptive to, you know, almost 4,000 people coming through? Or is it going to be more standoffish? And so we just thought, you know what, it's the right thing to do. 
for everybody uh, to, to push it off. Now, we'll, we'll do it again next year. We'll, we'll be back. It'll be strong as ever, and, and it'll, it'll be great. Um, this year, I'm still trying to find some ways that we can bring the community back together, probably in the, sometimes in the fourth quarter. Because I think that'll be important, again, that people will be looking for those, those connection opportunities. And uh, I think that we're all kind of going through those situations where everyone's trying to find ways to, to connect with their friends and connect with people that they know or people with common interest. And, and we want to find a way to do that, you know, definitely later in the year with many community. Great. Um, so you joined many, what, about a year ago now? Pretty yeah, about, about nine months. Yeah, so pretty interesting. <laughs> nine months. What surprised you most about uh, that? Yeah, I mean, um, I I was it, it was it was kept my first entree back into the car business after probably thirteen years, mm -hmm. and I was surprised at how much fun it was. And uh, you know, when I left the car business, I was it was kind of getting tiring and. And uh, I was ready for a change. Well, well now kind of coming back uh, into Mini, it reminded me that, you know, with the right brand, and Mini, Mini is a fun brand, and so I couldn't think of a better brand to transition from two wheels, you know, back to four wheels. Right. Um, but that was the thing. It's just, I, I, it, it, it wasn't uh, completely new that it was going to be fun, but it was just how much fun it was going to be. And so, you know, while it's definitely an interesting industry right now, and there's definitely some challenges to things. It's uh, it, it, that's definitely been been really really good coming on board. It's just been a lot of fun. Cool. So what what are the obviously there are challenges right now directly related to COVID nineteen and that and keeping the things moving. What are some of the other challenges that you saw say before this started that you were really looking forward to taking on with Mini? Yeah, so I, there's a lot of people when I when I first came on board with Mini, um, the question was always, "Oh, Mike, what what's it like, you know, uh, heading up a small car brand in a truck and SUV industry?" And you know, I heard that a lot. That was usually the first question everybody would ask me. And you know, on one hand, so I I handle the Americas, so essentially the whole Western Hemisphere, and really outside of the U.S. and Canada. You know, Mini is 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 you know really 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 strong, and uh, it's you know there's small cars are more of a thing certainly when you get outside of, of the U.S. Uh, but certainly the fact that we are in a truck and SUV industry here in the U.S. that that true that's a factor, but to me it's less about being a, a brand that sells small cars. People have come to Mini because they want fun, they want the go-kart handling, they appreciate kind of the innovation of the product and, and the community aspect of the brand that we keep talking about. And so those are all things that are really kind of my, my key focus is on how do we continue to cultivate that? Um, how do we get back to maybe some of the things that people have, have known and expected from Mini? And, you know, I'll tell you, every time I... I've got a, a JCW uh, Countryman with the, the you know 301 horsepower now, which is like awesome in that car. And when I hop into work, unfortunately, I don't have a very long drive, but when I hop in, it always, always puts a smile on my face, and it kind of reminds me. It's like you know, it's just it's it's just so much fun. It just feels right, and uh, it's you know it's the next best thing to uh, hop into a go kart and spin around the track. So, awesome. so um, let's talk about forward because hopefully you know in a few months we'll be coming out of this and 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 moving forward um mini electric made its debut in january uh, unfortunately i didn't get to drive it yet i'm looking forward to it when when we can but um tell me about how that informs the future of of maybe where mini is going and uh, yeah so i mean 10 10 years ago mini had a uh, very limited production electric vehicle to kind of get the feelers out there. And I know there's been a lot of people that have said, oh man, isn't, isn't any kind of, you know, late to the, late to the scene with electric. And well, we really wanted to, to make sure that what we brought to market was really a mini. Um, you know, you can't just say, hey, here's a, an electric vehicle and, and it's different than what the rest of your brand is all about. So that, that first of all, was really important. But I mean, electric is, I think, a really good fit for many. 
When you think about if you've driven electric vehicles, anybody who's a driven electric vehicle or even electric motorcycle, mm -hmm. um, they're a lot of fun. It's instant torque. And when you tie that together with Mini, it just, it kind of feels like it was meant to be that way. So while, you know, for the foreseeable future, we will still have the, you know, gas and oil and internal combustion, but you're going to see, you know, additional uh, expansion of our portfolio into this space with electric. But the new Mini Electric, I mean, it's been really, really well received. I mean, we're almost sold out with uh, the production through October right now. Uh, we've taken a lot of pre-orders. I've started to get some of the initial feedback from customers who are just saying, you know what, it's a lot of fun. And to your point, we'll have, we'll have to give you a chance to drive it somehow. <laughs> because, um, I was on a, a test track. We just had some dealers that we took to Lisbon in um, February. And when you get it out on the track and even, even you compare a Cooper S mm -hmm. and a Mini Electric, uh, we had a lot of dealers who were you know, kind of coming back and saying, wow, the the Mini Electric actually is even more fun because of just that instant torque. Uh, it's got a little bit uh, improved, you know, lower center of gravity just because of how the batteries are positioned and such. And it really makes for truly that, that go-kart feeling because uh, even with um, the pedal feel, which you can change, you can make it where it feels exactly like a go-kart mm -hmm. or where it will drive like a regular car. So those are the things that when you pair it all together and, and you, you kind of emphasize the fun, uh, electric seems like a really good fit for many. So um, all the customization capabilities that people have of a traditional Mini, those are available with the electric as well in terms of accessories yeah. and stuff? Yeah, so I mean, it, it was really important that in some cases, people want to say, hey, I'm driving an electric vehicle. And, and so there's you know some of the kind of fluorescent uh, mirror caps and, and some of the uh, badging on the vehicle that kind of denotes that, some special wheels that, that are available on certain models. But there's also the ability for some people that they, they don't necessarily want to scream that it's electric and they want it to, to look however they want it to look. So there's really the, the option to, like, like all minis, for people to really make it their own, kind of have that custom of one if you want. Um, and all those, those trim pieces that are available uh, are also available in mini electric as well. Yeah. Sure, sure. So um, question for you, back to a little more personal. Um, if we were to go open your garage, what's in your garage right now? <laughs> well, um, you'll find I'm a little bit of a company guy at the moment. So uh, you will find a 2020 John Cooper Works uh, Countryman. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll find a 2020 uh, BMW X3 M40i and uh, a 2019 uh, R1150 or R1250 RT, uh, and uh, which I get out occasionally. I would say the, I'm in the Mini the most. Okay. That's, that's currently what's in the garage. Excellent, excellent. So you're still riding? I'm still riding whenever I can. Uh, my challenge is, and it's actually, it's actually been an interesting thing lately, is I'm normally traveling a lot, in some cases up, upwards of 200,000 miles a year. And uh, I'm in Munich almost monthly and uh, across the country and, and South America quite a bit as well. So I haven't been doing any traveling in the last five weeks. I've been right here. And uh, so that's been, a, that's been a different situation. And I think in the last five weeks, I think I've actually gotten out in my mini three times. So, and unfortunately, I haven't gotten the motorcycle out uh, much at all. I kind of get to, to ride that to the office every now and then. Yeah, hopefully we'll all be able to get back in our cars and on our motorcycles again soon. If, when you that. do that, is there, a, is there a ride or a place that you've ridden or driven that you just love and you can't wait to get back to and drive again? Is there a road or a, a place? Yeah, you know, locally, um, uh, the big spot to go up here in North North Jersey and kind of getting into New York is uh, is Bear Mountain, and uh, there's just a, a ton of great roads uh, that are up that way. But you know, my my favorites are probably still when I can getting out to uh, Colorado, getting up into the mountains, uh, and in some cases getting out to like PCH on California. That's definitely uh, if I was in if I was in a mini convertible, I'd want the top down 
getting out on PCH, uh, getting the wind blowing through, and uh, that would be that would be ideal. That'd be a good time to kind of get out once things start to get back to normal. Yeah, hopefully we'll all be back in in that mode soon. Um, I don't have any other questions for you at this point. Is there anything else you want to add about Mini or um, you know message going forward for for folks? It's uh, I appreciate having the opportunity to to do this and and connect. Uh, I know from a uh, Mini side. We're really looking forward to you know how things will continue to develop, kind of bring in some new products to market. We're interested to see how many electric continues to to develop, and then the new GP. You know, we've kind of got our our bookend products because with the new mini uh, JCW GP, uh, that is is our most powerful you know mini ever. Yeah, and another one I'm looking out. forward to driving too. So <laughs> that one is a stream. That one is a stream. So we're we're looking forward to kind of you know continuing to bring new products to the market. And uh, and to make sure we're kind of fueling all that fun and passion, and and of course we're looking forward to connecting all our owners uh, as soon as we can come up. Great, great. Well, thanks so much for taking some time to sit down with us here at Rides and Drives. Really appreciate it. I'm sure I'll see you somewhere down the road here, and hopefully on um, Mini Takes the States next year. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. We'll look forward to it, and we'll have to find another way to get you a new Mini Electric sometime soon.